Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ahabata fillah I thought it would be a benefit to go over something which will remind us of our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the explanation of the kalimat to tawheed and so this is a short treatise Shaykh Ali bin Hadi al-Madkhali hafizallahu ta'ala about the entitled Tafsir Kalimat to tawheed the explanation of the Kalimat to tawheed And he said, he began, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Nahmudu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'afiru wa na'udhu billah min shuroori anfusina, min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Min yahdi Allah fala mudilla lah, wa min yudlil fala hadiya lah, wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ahtahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu an Muhammadin abduhu wa rasooluh, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Ya ayu al-ladina amanu, اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهم رجال كثيرة وبث منهم رجال كثيرة ونساء وبث منهم رجال كثيرة ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا واتقوا الله وكونوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم من يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن الأسدق الحديث كتاب الله وكلام الله وخيرا وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار he said, Verily holding on to the book and the sunnah in matters of aqidah and minhaj is a matter which is obligatory upon every Muslim. It is upon us to stick to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in all manners. Thus we have to stick to what the Prophet ﷺ came with in its totality. And in one of the encompassing statements which almost totals all of the religion is the famous hadith known as the Hadith of Jibreel. As narrated by the guided Khalifa Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'l'am who said, بَيْنَمَا نَحْنُ بَيْنَمَا كُنَّا عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم إِذَا جَاءَنَا رَجْلٌ شَدِيدٌ بِعَادِ الثِّيَابِ شَدِيدُ سُوَادِ الشَّعَرِ لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرف ولا يعرفه من أحد فأسند ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه ووضع كفيه على فاخذيه إلى آخر حديث. He said one day we were sitting with the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. There appeared before us a man whose clothes were exceedingly white and whose hair was exceedingly black. No signs of journeying were to be seen on him. None of us knew him. He walked up and sat down by the Prophet Sallallahu Resting his knees against his and placing the palms of his hands on his thighs, he said, O oh, Muhammad, tell me about Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Islam is to testify that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah and Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To perform the prayers, to, say the, uh, to pray, pay the zakat, to fast in Ramadan and to make the pilgrimage to the house if you are able to do so. Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Salam said, you have spoken rightly. And we were amazed at him asking him and saying and testifying that he had spoken rightly. This is what the Sahaba said. The Shaykh then said, this is because from the normal behavior of one who is ignorant, when he asks on something, it means he doesn't know it. And thus he does not say to the one who answered him, you have spoken the truth. Rather the one who says this is a person who had prior knowledge and not a person who was asking and he didn't know that answer. Then the hadith uh, continues and he asked about Iman. He said, فَأَخْبِرْنِي الْإِمَانِ 
And he said, in Tu'min of Billahi wa Malaikati wa Kutubi wa Rasuli wa Liyum al-Akhir, Tu'min of Qadri Khairi wa Shah. So he said, and tell me about Iman. He said, it is to believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers in the last day, and to believe in the divine destiny, both the good and the evil thereof. He said, you have spoken rightly. He said, then tell me about Ihsan. He said, it is to worship Allah as though you were seeing Him, and while you see Him not, yet truly He sees you. He said, then tell me about the hour. He said, the one question about it knows no better than the questioner. He said, then tell me about its signs. He said that the slave girl will give birth to her mistress and that you will see the barefooted, naked, destitute herdsmen competing and constructing lofty buildings. Then he took himself off and I stayed for a time. Then he said, oh, Umar, atedri mena sa'il, do you know who the questioner was? He said, Allah wa Rasulu a'lam. Allah and his messenger know best. He said, he was Jibreel who came to teach you your religion. Sheikh Rabi then mentions, he says, thus Jibreel came in this strange picture, which impressed Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He, Jibreel, came as an order from Allah. This is because Allah the Exalted says, and we descend angels not except by the command of your Lord. So meaning that the angels, they descend by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. Therefore, Jibreel does not come except by the command of Allah. And one time it happened that the revelation was slower or delayed, not as the Prophet ﷺ had expected. So we asked Jibreel والسلام, and thus Allah, the one free from all defects, the exalted, revealed this ayat, and we descend not except by the command of your Lord. To him belongs what is before us and what is behind us, and what is between those two, and your Lord is uh, never forgetful. So then the Shaykh says, going back to the hadith, we see the Prophet ﷺ said, He came to teach you your religion. Because these great, great questions that Jibreel ﷺ asked encompass the pillars of Islam and the pillars of Iman and the third degree, which is Ihsan, or the third darajah, the third level, which is Ihsan. And the texts of the Quran and the Sunnah revolve around these principles and branch together the beliefs and the social dealings and other things. He mentioned the pillars of Islam and the pillars of Iman because these are a must. They are a must for all Muslims to believe in, such that if one of these pillars is missing, then he or she hasn't believed in Islam and is not a Muslim nor a mu'min. So it's very important to understand that these are called the maratib, maratib al-Islam, that we, we talk about uh, uh, Islam and Iman and Ihsan, that they are different levels, different maratib, different levels uh, of belief and that the Islam and the Iman those pillars are a must to believe in the one who doesn't believe in them is not a Muslim and he stated the pillars of Islam is five just as the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said Guni al-Islam ala khams shahadatan la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan rasulullah wa akimu salah wa qamasa wa ita'i zakah وصوم رمضان وحج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيل سبيلا. Islam has been built on five pillars: the testification that there's none worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, performing the prayers, paying the zakat, making the pilgrimage to the house, and fasting in Ramadan. So these are the pillars of Islam and the testification that there's no God worthy of worship except Allah. This is the foundation of the whole religion. And no person can enter in Islam except by it. And if he commands any of these things, or if he commits any of these things which nullify it, then he goes out of the fold of Islam. And so we'll stop there until the next sitting when we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and figure of our evil.